Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, what's up? It is once again me, your boy, fighting the good fight on the front lines against not having any good content. So today we're gonna take a look at some of your film photography hotcakes, takes. But I suppose that if I had a hot take about film other than my head being ginormous, it would be that if the legendary film stock Kodachrome somehow came back, it would not be very successful and it would ultimately fail. Everybody nowadays wants the opportunity to shoot Kodachrome like it was this magic film that just always hit. But nowadays, I don't know, it's a little bit different. Slide film isn't exactly flying off the shelves. That, and I've heard that with processing included and, you know, adjusted for inflation, Kodachrome was like $50 a roll back in the day. Meanwhile, everyone nowadays just drops their pants and takes a huge shit on Kodak when they have to pay, you know, whatever, $18 a roll for Portra. I mean, I get it. Paying for stuff sucks. That's why I use the five finger discount. So there you go. It's pretty relieving to get that off the old chesticles. But let's dive in and see what you all had to say. God damn, I got a lot of messages. Let's start with this one. If you're only a good photographer when using an expensive camera, you're not a good photographer. Gear will not fix your shit compositions. Hell yeah. Oh shit, I use expensive gear. Chinese lenses on Leicas are okay, on God. No need for the hate. I don't really have a ton of experience in this field. Actually, zero experience. I've heard that Light Lens Lab and Typoc are the, um, the ones to keep an eye out for. Not every film scan needs to look warm like Kodak Gold. Yeah, I mean, that's why we shoot different film stocks, right? If you're shooting like Ektar and then leaning it warm and making it look flat like Kodak Gold, then why not just shoot gold? Portra 160 is underutilized and Portra 400 is overutilized. You're probably right. I haven't shot a ton of Portra 160. I'm kind of one of those film photography douchebags who's shot more Portra 400 than any other film stock probably. I went through some, you know, formative film photography years. Don't, don't get mad at me. Here's another one. Portra 160 is way better than Portra 400, but no one seems to care. Yeah, Lomography has been keeping film alive since the early 2000s by releasing new film stocks and cameras when no other company did. They therefore don't deserve the hate and ridicule from some in the community who seem to want every film stock to be Portra 400. Hmm. I would agree with that mostly. I think they played a uh, played a part in keeping film alive. I don't know if, you know, they single-handedly did it. I like Lomography. They're kind of the weird side of film photography sometimes, but they release some good products every now and then. <laughs> I don't know. The Reddit community doesn't represent the whole film community. Yeah. That's actually good to hear. I would also say the YouTube community doesn't represent the whole film community either. Instax Wide is better than Polaroid. In 10 years, AI will be so good at creating photos and grain that you'll have to show your negatives as proof you actually took the photo. I hope that's not what we're heading towards, but I, yeah, I can see a world where that, where that happens. You have to validate your photo somehow. Where do you draw the line? It, it's a fluid thing, you know, you could take a real photo and then augment a lot of it. It just depends on how deep you want to go too. Like if you take a photo of a waterfall on a digital camera, are you posting the raw photo or are you applying like a preset to it? Does that count as like altering, you know, the photo? You're not really representing the thing for what it really is because you're, you know, bumping the colors or the brightness or, you know, making it look better than it was. I mean, if we want to go even deeper, technically there is no such thing as reality through photography because you take a photo, you're kind of just relying on whatever manufacturer's color science to capture that photo. It might not be like 100% accurate. Maybe there is no such thing as 100% accurate, you know? I guess to sum it all up, uh, we're f***ed. This one has uh, sent me spiraling a little bit. I think I will be proceeding to sell all my film cameras. Shooting on film doesn't make it good. Yeah, neither does shooting on your $6,000 digital camera. Ooh, some of the same people who think shooting film in 2024 is stupid also think it's cool to spend $8,000 on a camera that only shoots black and white. I mean, those monochrome cameras are pretty tight. Somehow in this mix of DMs, Monica sent me a, a meme that's absolutely vile. Medium format is overrated. No, C41 shouldn't be developed at home. You can slow down and be considerate with a digital camera as well, and it's okay to shoot film just because you think it's cool. This person seems pretty accepting of uh, of all lifestyles. 99% of us don't need a fridge. Cinestill 800T in the daytime is superior in every way to Cinestill 50D. Using a Leica doesn't make you a good photographer. Yeah, but it makes you look good. The prices aren't any higher now than they were during its absolute peak in 1999. It's just not the only capture medium out there is anymore. Wow, I read that very badly. Yeah, so basically film isn't more expensive nowadays than it was back in the day when you, I guess, account for inflation. I've heard this. I can't really verify myself. I don't know. I'm sure people back in the day probably, you know, complained about film prices too. I'm sure Ansel Adams was constantly bitching about film prices. Expired film is underrated. Abandoned buildings are overrated. 
Those are some fighting words, dog. Pull up, pop your shirt off, and let's fucking go. Color negative films, you can't replicate their look because they actually don't have a look. Different scanners will give... Why is there an accent over the E? In the days of uh, optical chemical printing, different papers would give another accent. What the fuck is going on? Any Portrait 400 preset is bullshit because Portrait 400 doesn't look like anything until it's scanned, printed, or both. And there are thousands of ways to do that, and it'll look very different. Films have properties, but no look. That's a very concise way of summarizing it. I think a lot of people that are getting into film won't really understand that and it'll be kind of a, a point of confusion. I know it was for me for a long time. I always struggled to get the uh, the film look, you know, that everyone else was able to get for some reason. I wouldn't call this a hot take. It's more of like an underground fact, you know what I mean? And also fix your keyboard. Some people take analog photos for the social media engagement, not for the process itself. <laughs> I don't know. There hasn't really been a ton of engagement lately. Instagram's kind of like dead. Some people don't seem to know what hot takes are, and they're just sending me their photos to be reviewed. Digital flu so film could walk again. I don't know what that means. Black and white will never be as appreciated as color. Putting a white border around a photo doesn't make it good. Ah, shit. Lens design died in the 80s. Once computers started being used, lenses lost their character. 6x6 is the best format for photography. Get the f out of here. I can only imagine the amount of f***ery in your DMs right now. Yeah, there's been a few. I'm just testing a new film, new camera, new developer, new lab, new lens, new temperature. It's just an excuse for photographers to avoid any kind of standard or ownership for quality in their work. It isn't their fault that their entire body of work sucks if they are just testing. Quit testing, commit to a single camera, a single film stock, and go make work that is difficult and meaningful and powerful and hold yourself to some kind of standard. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the dream as a photographer, right? Disassociate yourself from the gear and just kind of like focus on the, the photography. So I agree with this mostly. I think you also need to put in your like, you know, your 10,000 hours and test film stocks, test different looks, different whatever to find what it is exactly that you that you want. And then when you do find that, just, you know, stick to it and focus more on the on the photography. Yeah, good point. Scanner matters way more than film stock. Yeah, but what if you don't scan your film? What if you print in the dark room? Film snapshots are a waste of film and money. 90% of film pics I see online would have been better on an iPhone. The expired film craze is brain rot culture. <laughs> Learn photography and take control of your exposures and development, then you can create those effects if you want. Yeah, that goes back to just experimenting. You could also just make your film expire faster by leaving it out in the sun, I suppose. Foma pan looks better than HP5 if you push it. If you're worried about medium, you're not a photographer. The film photography community is plagued with normies. You own a Leica, you're a poser. You buy an expensive point shoot, then fish through Reddit asking how to repair the point shoot, you're a poser. Don't bulk roll, go with the program, you're a poser. <laughs> I could go on, but I gotta go take a sh Thanks for including that. Film is entirely too cheap. Should be five euros a shot at least. You clearly have not discovered large format yet. Kodak should take notes from Lomography. Aerochrome is the best looking color film stock that has ever existed and it cannot be topped. Aerochrome is never coming back. I'm sorry, Jason. So you're saying I drank all those Mountain Dews for nothing? Ultra Max is better than Kodak Gold. I have heard a lot of people say that. I don't know, I love my gold though. I'm like a leprechaun in that way. Canon AE-1 is a beginner camera and better than basically any other body. You'll hate this, but I think Cinestill Red Halation uh, looks like butt on most photos. It's definitely like an accent piece. It's an acquired taste. Maybe that's the problem. Disposable cameras are annoying. I've shot rolls that have gone through four airport x-ray machines with minimal white balance shifts, easily fixable in Lightroom. My hot take is the x-rays aren't as bad as you might think. Yeah, but why risk it? You know what I mean? My sh needs to be pure. Also my film. People made it popular to own a Leica, so you don't have to lug around a Hasselblad or Pentax 6.7, even though they are much better cameras. I think this person and the uh, medium format sucks person need to fight. I'd pay to watch that fight. Portrait 400 is mid at best, same with HP5. I agree with you about the Portrait 400. HP5 is actually kind of dope, although I haven't shot it in a while. The Leica R cameras and lenses are criminally underrated and aren't just what you buy when you can't afford an M. Also, the Minolta Weathermatic is sexier than the Leica M6 will ever be. Pure sex appeal. Okay, well, I disagree there. You're just saying that to piss me off and it's working. Hey, this is disembodied voice Jason from the future. I recorded a beautiful extended segment because my neighbors decided to have a good old fashioned barnyard hoedown upstairs. Anyway, it featured even more hot takes that were really well done. I put the lav mic decided to put itself in mute mode somehow the whole time because everything has to be difficult, but whatever. Sorry if you didn't make the cut. It was probably in this section. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go drink and do drugs to forget this ever happened. But before we wrap up this video, I'd like to quickly thank today's sponsor, Squarespace, for their ongoing support. Need to 
stand out from the crowd and fast, let me introduce you to your new best friend, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that features the ability to truly unlock your creative potential. Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates or get started crafting your visionary website with something called the Blueprint AI, a new powerhouse feature in Squarespace's building toolkit. Blueprint AI is an automated way to generate the foundation of your website by answering a few simple questions at the get-go and letting the algorithm figure out the rest for you. With 1.4 billion potential design combinations and the brand new Fluid Engine, a sleek new way to drag and drop elements of your website wherever at your disposal, you can build the website of your dreams faster than ever before. If you ever get around to selling products, Squarespace even has the infrastructure to open up shop right there on your own website with all the modern amenities available for customers to purchase items like credit cards, Apple Pay, PayPal, and even Afterpay and Clearpay. And best of all, if you run into any snags at any point, you can get in touch with Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support or find the answer you need amongst the always available help forums. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. If you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Well, that's that. Everyone's got an opinion on film photography and I'd say most of them suck, but you know, there are probably some nuggets of truth in there somewhere. Anyway, I promise I'll try harder for some uh, real content soon. See you on the next one. Unless my computer blows up. I don't know. It's making a bunch of noises.